Hello, this is Mrs. Smeggins, and for the last couple lessons, we've been learning how to make inferences. Readers make inferences. How do we do this? We collect details from the text. We collect those details that will help us figure out what the answer is. We collect those details, and then we use our thinking voice to put them together and try to figure out what they all mean. And that's what gives us the inference. Reading voice plus thinking voice equals a new idea, and that's called an inference. Well, in this lesson, I want to go one step further. And knowing this information, I want to add to it. And so I'm going to reveal below this chart paper that that says basically the same thing, doesn't it? Readers make inferences by collecting details, putting them together based on patterns, memories, relationships, in order to figure out the answer, the new idea, the inference. So I'm gonna set this chart to the side. And we're gonna use this new one over here because I said I wanna to add to it and this one was getting full. So, do you notice anything on this one? You see that? Readers make inferences and, oh, what else is there? Well, remember that readers not only have thoughts, and sometimes say them out loud, but they have thoughts and they can explain them in writing. Readers are writers too. So in this lesson, what I wanna do is show you how you can take your inference, your big new idea, and explain it in writing. Readers make inferences and explain them in writing. Okay, so I wanna teach you how to do that. How, how do you do that? And oh, I have to write, no. you guys, come on. You have done the hard work. The hard work, you did it in the reading, in the thinking and figuring it out. And now all the information you need is right there on that bad boy. I'm not kidding. This is gonna be a cakewalk. If you can make the inference, if you can figure out the answer, that's the hard part. Writing it, pff, nothing. Let me show you. The first thing I want you to realize is that we started on the outside. When, as a reader, we collected details that we thought would help. We grouped them based on how our thinking voice thought they went together. And we ended with the inference, right? That's the process for reading. Step one, step two, step three. But when you write your inference, when you now explain it in writing for someone else to read, you actually are going to start, the first sentence will start with your inference you're going to give us the answer in the first sentence. As a reader, the answer was the last thing we got. As a writer, it's the first thing you say. It's the first thing you say, and then you have to tell your audience when you're writing which details were most helpful? See how this is green, right? Green is, is reading voice. Green comes from the outside. So you got this answer and you're, you're writing and you start with your answer, but then you need to say, and these were the clues. These were the details that the author put in the text that helped me figure this out. We call them details when we collect them from the text. Those words, those phrases, those details are just details. But as soon as you 
are writing your response, explaining your thinking in writing, then we don't always refer to it as a detail anymore. Now, whichever details were most helpful in you figuring it out, that is what you call evidence. You've heard the term evidence, but it's just a detail until it actually helps you figure out the answer. So the first sentence you write is the inference, the answer, whatever you think the answer to the question is, okay? That's the first sentence. Now, I got a, a black dot here because that's a period. Your first sentence, period, give me the answer, boom. Okay, in a sentence, but give me the answer, okay? Then you're gonna give me a piece of evidence. And you surely know that one single piece of evidence is not gonna be enough. So we need to add more details, more evidence that helped us. And you may have learned along the way that when you're writing your evidence sentences, the details that helped you the most, that's what evidence is. When you're writing those sentences, you might use some of these phrases. Are you familiar with these? The text states that, and then you mention the detail. See, I put these in green. Proof of this, proof of this answer is, tell me which detail helped the most. But do you see how you have to have at least two pieces of evidence? Two super helpful details. So you might then say a second example is, the text also states, are you familiar with these? Okay, this is where they fit. It's when you're ready to write your response. That's when you use those sentence starters, okay? So I'm gonna put them over here to the side just as a reminder, but this is what your response will include. And let me add our periods because you do see that if we start with a second example is blah, 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 period. It also states, the author said, blah, 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 period. So right now, we're learning that after you make an inference, you do the thinking and figure out the answer that readers then sometimes have to write or type their response. They have to explain their thinking and write. And so they do that explaining. And right now we're learning it's going to take three sentences, a sentence to give us the answer, and then two more, at least two more sentences to tell us which details were most helpful. And we call those details evidence. Say it again. Evidence. Okay, good. So let's, let's see how this looks. All right, let's, let's check this out. I have, do you guys remember, whoop, Mrs. Smeckens lost some of her sticky notes. I'm going to bend down and grab them here in a second. But do you remember in our last lesson when we were learning how to make an inference that we read this passage? Reread that passage. Okay. Do you remember this one? Okay, now I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Now look back here. Do you remember that I collected certain clues, the vest and, and the dark room hiding and the red beam of light, the special gear, and I figured out what are they doing? They're playing laser tag. Remember that? Okay, so now I'm going to use this. Remember I told you. It is so easy to explain your thinking in writing because the thinking was the hard part. We already, I already did the hard part on the silhouette head, on, on, the, on the head outline. That was the hard part. Now I'm going to show you how you can turn that whole thing ba -bam, into a written response. Okay? And, and so even though I ended with the pink, I ended with laser tag. That was my inference. That was the last thing I got as a reader. It's the first thing I write as a writer. Okay, so here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to actually 
take that detail, that pink sticky detail, off, and I'm going to put it up here to remind me that my first sentence has to tell that the answer is laser tag. Okay, so now let me identify which details, which green details on my chart were most helpful to me in figuring out laser tech. Hmm. Well, I definitely think knowing that, um, that for me, remember, I didn't know laser tech. And so some of you might think this was the most helpful, the best, but it wasn't most helpful for me. And this is my written explanation. What was really helpful for me was first figuring out they're playing a game. It took me a while to figure that out. So I think that this grouping of details was really helpful. See how I took the whole group? Yeah, that counts as evidence. One piece of evidence. The group is one piece of evidence. No, 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 no. It's not, well, you have three green. No, it's together they helped me. Alone, they didn't help me. So that's one piece. And then the other piece that was important was that red beam of light. Okay, so now let's compare that sticky note chart behind me. Let's compare that to this. Do you see it? Answer, evidence, evidence. Did I have to do any new thinking? No, all the thinking was on my head. I, I just moved the sticky notes. I already did the hard part. All I gotta do now is turn this into sentences. Cake, we got this, you guys. All right, watch me. Here I go. I I'm gonna do it. Okay, so I have to. I have to start my response. I'm going to write sentences. How many sentences? Three. I'm going to start my response by saying laser tag. But laser tag is not a sentence. It's two words. All right. So I'm going to write a sentence. And, and look what the question was. Look back on the screen. What are they doing? Okay. I'm going to turn it into a sentence. And this is the answer. They are playing laser tag. Got it. I've written the first sentence. I can get rid of that sticky note. Okay, and the first sentence is always the answer. Did it? Good, right? All right, next sentence, evidence. Okay, but look, 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 look. That's why I put these right here to help us remember. The text states, proof that they're playing laser tag is, I wanna now write a sentence and use these keywords, these details, okay? And because they came from the text, the author, I'm going to put them in quotes, all right? Because they're not my words, they're the author's words. And part of proof is that I'm not making this up, that the author said this and this and this. So I'm going to use quote marks, all right? So let me pull this off to give myself some room. And, and so now I'm going to say the text States that there are players. Look, I'm making it up. And if it's the author's word, I'm putting it in quotes. There are players who have to stay in boundaries and may get eliminated. See how I did that? I pushed it all together in one real smart sounding sentence. There are players who have to stay in boundaries or in bounds, but I'll say in boundaries so that I can put quotes around it because that's the word the author used. And may get eliminated. All right. Second sentence, done. First sentence is the inference. Second sentence is a piece of evidence. What's the third sentence gotta be? Ba-bam, another piece of evidence, right? 
And and so I decided ahead of time, I think that whole red beam of light was super important for me to figure it out. So um, I, I'm going to use one of those sentence starters. Let's look back. Okay, a second example. Okay, I'm going to use that. A second example is the author said there was a red beam of light. Now, let's look back at the text. Red beams of light flash. Uh, okay, red beams of light. Remember when I was doing notes, I was just doing it fast. Okay, so I'm going to add the look. The author said there were, quote, red beams of light. Period. Quote. Because that phrase came from the author. I just did it. I just explained my thinking and writing. You guys, you got this. You have already done the hard work. All right. So now you're going to help me with the next one. I'm going to take off the rest of the sticky notes from the laser tag. I'm going to turn my chart paper to give us a clean one because you know every time I do something, then it's your turn. All right, you guys. So do you remember when we figured out they were playing Uno? That was the answer, wasn't it? I'm going to find it back here on my screen for you. There it is. What game are they playing? We said Uno. And the clues that we came up with were things like there was a middle pile that people would draw from. It said they were playing cards. It said they all got seven cards. It said that they, they sometimes have a change in direction and they sometimes get skipped. Those were all the details that we came up with in our previous lesson. Okay, and so we said playing cards, seven. Okay, so they're playing some kind of card game. We knew that. And we also were thinking it could be Old Maid, it could be Goldfish, it could be War. There were lots of possibilities. We also picked up on this change of direction. Remember the counterclockwise part? And said, oh, switch. They switch going in another. Oh, they reverse. For some of us, that was an important word, wasn't it? When we were thinking, that was thinking voice, yellow's thinking voice. Okay. And then this idea that sometimes you get to play and sometimes you get skipped. And so we, we were thinking that the rules were changing in the middle of the game. Okay, so we've already done the work. What this lesson is about is how readers not only can make the inference, figure out the answer, they can also explain it in writing. Okay, so help me. Point, use your pointer finger, point right now. What would be the first, what, which of these sticky notes would be in the very first sentence you write? Are you pointing at the pink one? Well done. Because even though the answer was last, it's the first thing we write. All right? Then what do we need to have? Look back at our anchor chart. Evidence. How many? At least two. Okay. And what is evidence again? Where, where, what? It's details. Is it any detail? Should I just pick any green detail? Which details? The most helpful details, the ones that really helped you figure out, by golly, they're playing Uno. And so, now we don't all have to agree, but just so we can do a class example, let's, let's look up here. Was it that they were playing a card game? Was it that there's a switch in reverse, change of direction? Was it that that some people get skipped. I think having the cards is important because remember, without cards, we didn't even know what kind of game it was. So they were playing cards. If that's one of our details, what what's another one or two that you think we should include that one? Point in it. Point at it. 
Are you pointing at Skip? Because that's really specific to Uno. Some of you are thinking change your direction. Okay, let's take them off. All right, we don't need our head anymore. And remember, you already, whoa, Mrs. Meckins is dropping her stuff here. All right, now, remember, you've already done your thinking. So we're just writing sentences now. This is the easy part. All right, so we know that they're playing some kind of card game and that there are times that they change directions and or get skipped. Okay, so we gotta turn this into a sentence. Uno is not a sentence, people. Come on, look, look at the question. Look at the question. What game are they playing? Use some of those words. Give me a sentence. Come up with it. Say it out loud right now. How would you, how would you write the first sentence? They are playing Uno. Some of you say they are playing the game Uno. Okay, there's probably other options. They are playing Uno. Okay, proper noun, I'm gonna capitalize it. All right, done with it, check. Next sentence has to be evidence, right? Not just a detail, very helpful details are called evidence. All right, so playing cards. Okay, we know that, they're, that, that they were playing cards. It says it in the second sentence. Look back, one person begins passing out playing cards. They are using playing cards. All right, come on now. We need a sentence beginning. This is not a sentence. We've got to turn it into a sentence. You, you don't have to be limited to these. You can, you can use others. You know others. Okay, the text states... They passed out playing cards. Okay, what's another way you could say the same information, but maybe a slightly different sentence? One example. Okay. Proof is. Proof they were playing Uno is. Let's pick one of those. Or a third. How would you write it? Say right now out loud, how would you write this second sentence? I'm gonna go with proof. They are playing Uno is that they passed out playing cards. Look back at the passing out playing cards. That they passed out playing cards. Playing cards, is that my word? Nope, it's the author. So what do I gotta do? Quote it, well done. Playing cards, all right, good, period. So I've got my first sentence, inference, check. I got my evidence, check. Am I done? I'm good, right? No, why am I not good? What do I need? Another detail. Well done. Here we go. Another detail, special kind of detail, super helpful detail. And what do we call it? Evidence. Good. And so I'm done with playing cards. And that leaves me with these two details in my next sentence. Okay. I'll start the sentence. You figure out how to use these details to finish it. Here we go. Uh, we said they are playing Uno. Proof they are playing Uno is that they passed out playing cards. Um, the text also stated... Okay, let's try it. I gotta keep these in my hand so I remember. How, the text also states, they sometimes, quotes, changed direction or got skipped. I'm putting skipped in quotes because that's the author's words. I just want everybody to know I'm not making this up. This evidence is right in the reading and you will find it if you go back and look. You guys, what this lesson was all about was that readers not only make inferences, think them and say them. They make inferences, think them, say them, and they can write them. And although you ended with an inference, when you write your response, 
you start with the inference. Then you just tell us which details were most helpful. All right, if you were in Mrs. Smackin's class, here's what you would be doing. Do you remember your assignment from the previous lesson? Remember this passage and you were trying to figure out why the boy was crying? Did you figure it out? Because he was lost in the woods. Yeah, he thought they were lost. Do you remember why the boy didn't get his name checked off the teacher's list? Because he didn't do his homework. He didn't turn in his homework. Do you know where they were? Remember the hot cement, the edge of the water, step down into water? They were at a swimming pool, an outdoor swimming pool, because the cement was hot, so we know they were outside. Okay, so you've already done these, all right? And when you did these, remember I asked you to have three silhouette heads, three head outlines, trace it or print it, capture, collect the details, figure out the answers. You guys, you've already done the thinking. You're going back to those. Bust those three heads out, and I want you to turn each one of those into a three sentence written response, just like we did. I want you to look at the head and you already know the answer. So the first sentence will be easy, but then figure out which clues, which, which sets of two clues were most helpful. So you can write each of those sentences and just do it on the back side of the head. Just turn it over and write it there. Or if you want to do it on the same side, cause you have space, you can do that too. But all three of them, I want you to take the thinking you already did and I want you to turn all three of them into a three sentence written response. If you were in Mrs. Smekin's class, that's what we'd be doing, but your teacher might have a better idea.